Good morning. I call to order the January 22nd, 2019 beginning er, <laughs> meeting of the uh, Saline County Board of Commissioners. Uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Commissioner Shadwick? Here. Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Vidrickson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Commissioner White? Here. I ask that you please stand and join me in a flag salute followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I gave a couple of moments of silence uh, in remembrance of the chiefs over the weekend, so yeah. sorry to take up your time for that one. All right, we now have a public forum where citizens may speak on county government, usually limited to three minutes, and items that are not on today's agenda. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for regular business. Item number one. Approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. Second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve today's agenda for the public forum. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number two. RFA 104-19, North Central Flint Hill Area Agency on Aging Agreement with Rosie Walters, Senior Services Director. Good morning, Rosie. Good morning. Um, senior Services request commission signature on approval of the North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging Agreement for meal services for patrons that qualify for daily prepared meals or the subsidized meals. Senior Services provides meals on wheels in congregate dining room, meaning they, they eat in the dining room, for the federally funded program for Salina, Kansas. The North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging oversees an 18 county area, including Saline County, and has contracted with a previous commission on aging. And now would like to continue the continuity of services for patrons within the Saline County Department of Senior Services. The contract from the Commission on Aging remains basically the same um, with subsidized reimbursement level, but does allow North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging 10,000 annually for assessments completed on patrons to qualify them for Meals on Wheels and for other services. Um, staff and Rita um, have met with Mike Montoya, the County Council, and it has been legally approved. So I'm just requesting commission signature. Okay, thank you. Um, I assume this applies to in-house subsidy as well as Meals on Wheels? Correct. For, for those that are eligible? Yes. Uh, further questions or comments? Uh, Remind me of who decides who qualifies. North Central Flint Hills. They oh. do an assessment on everybody that qualifies. Right. And that's, okay. That's what I thought. Can, uh, why do we only the provide a reimburse rate of $3.50 per meal or three seventy-five? And if we're charging four fifty over here, right? Four seventy five is what we charge. Now. The the reason for that is that we sent out a sa a statement to all of the congregate in Meals on Wheels patrons asking for them to contribute something in return. So they get a statement that shows what the cost, the three fifty, and a lot of them do pay, but a lot of them can't afford to pay. So this is just a federally funded program, and that's what they allow. So. Why don't we still charge them the 450 and then get reimbursed what we can and then? Um, they don't. They will only subsidize at that level. Okay. I, I just uh, And is there another reason why this is only for six months and not a year? Well, it's taken quite a bit just to get this contract underway. But in the contract, it does say that it will continue on. You know, and will, will we probably revisit it? Probably so. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, I also see... Okay, it commences on December 31st, 2018, meaning start date. Right. And is the, the 350 is that a set amount or is it a percentage of what our meal cost is? No, it's just a set amount. It's not really, okay. I mean, I could figure the percentage, but it is just a set amount. And it's something that, you know, the Commission on Aging, when they were in effect, that's what the amount that they, but we did, you know, County Council, Rita, um, we did go back and forth for almost a year you know on this just trying to get an agreement well anything that we get i mean is 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 a plus and uh, plus the service that we're uh serving our our elderly that are that don't have as much yes. as the next guy so correct all right further comments 
Public comment? Yeah, Norman Mountain Swan to Kansas. Is the funding based on the amount of people that sign up? Does that? No. Oh, I thought maybe if more people signed up, you'd get more funding. Well, I'm, you know, with North Central Flint Hills, I mean, they, they are a federally funded program. So, I mean, in that light, I'm not sure, but I, we don't see that part of it. Is it based off numbers? Probably, but we don't see that. Oh. Well, it sounds like it might be uh, that case, Norman, if more people were to sign up because That's it's per each meal. So mm -hmm. if, if however many we serve, we're going to get $3.50 per person. Right. Person that's what we're going to that, see. That's eligible. It's not just everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, a, a right. rich man like you can't just go over and get <laughs> subsidized. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're uh -huh. welcome. <laughs> All right. We'll bring it back to the commission for action. Mr. Chairman, I move we sign the North Central Flint Hills Area Aging Ag Agency on Aging uh, Agreement as requested by staff. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 104-19 for the North Central Flint Hills Area Agency on Aging Agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number three. All right. <coughs> Excuse me, RFA 105-19, Sunflower Adult Day Services Agreement with Rosie Welter, Senior Services Director. And Rosie, you're in the spotlight again. All right. Um, senior Services requesting Commissioner's signature approval on an agreement to provide an evacuation site for Sunflower Adult Day Service patrons. Senior Services has an existing working relationship with them where we provide meals, so we already serve a lot of the same patrons. Um, in the event an evacuation Sunflower would transport their patrons from 401 West Iron to Senior Services at 245 North 9th Street. Um, senior services hours of operations from 8 to 4 in the event of evacuation sunflower patients would need to arrive between those hours and will be allowed to stay after 4 if necessary and then sunflower staff are responsible for all of their own patrons and that would have been my question it was uh, if we needed extra staff or not yeah. it, it's it's primarily that their people will will provide the staffing to right. take they care of a situation like this yes further questions but at that point, somebody from your office would still have to be I there. I would stay. I would have oh, to I stay. Oh, I started to say, somebody yeah. would still have to be there to <laughs> lock and unlock the doors and yes. watch the place. So. Yes. Okay. Who, who initiated this? Was they this did. a plan of theirs? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Public comment? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to the commission for possible action. Mr. Chairman, I move we sign the Sunflower Adult Services Agreement as requested by staff. Second. Been moved and seconded that we approve RFA 105-19 uh, for Sunflower Adult Day Services Agreement. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item number four. Livestock and Expo update with Rick Lamer, Livestock and Expo Director. Good morning, Rick. Good morning. This will be my fourth quarter update for Expo Center, Weed Department, and County Farm. Um, I'll start with the weed department. The balance in the Noxus Weed Capital Outlay Fund is $45,693.17. Deposits for chemical sales in 2018 total $98,903.24. Um, right now, Bev, my secretary, is working on the annual Noxus Weed Report, which, which should come across your desk sometime in March for signature. And I'll have the weed supervisor come and update you on you. Update that report if you'd like. Either way, it doesn't matter, but you'll have to sign it. Um, weed supervisor is also working with Darren at Road and Bridge on roadside spraying and their tree program. And weed staff also will be attending the annual weed director's conference in Manhattan coming up in March. Um, on the county farm, the balance in the farm account is $189,779.41. And I also will be getting with you in the near future to discuss options on the county farm leases, which expire March 1st, 2020. Um, right now, those leases bring in $73,000 a year. So. And we're still accepting applications for the Oliver Hag Memorial Scholarship. These are $1,000 renewable scholarships. If you're a Sling County senior graduating this fall and entering college majoring in an ag-related field, 
Uh, you can pick up an application in our office at 900 Greeley or go to Sling County's website and print one off. We will accept those until March 9th. Basically, if you can carry a 300 point grade point average, go ahead and apply for it because that's one of the basic requirements. Uh, plans for February. Right now we have 11 events scheduled. A couple of the more notable ones, you've probably seen the signs around town, are the CAPS auction, benefit auction, February 2nd. And Salina Gun Show will be the last weekend in February. We also have an upcoming meeting with the city of Salina on the Expo Center lease coming up in February. And I'll move on to the slide presentation. As you can see right now, for the year, we had 336 total event days for 2018. And an event day is basically if something's moving into one of our buildings or the actual event, it's counted as an event day anytime we collect a rental fee. Some of the events that we've had going on recently, if I can get this to work. Doing that, Kevin. <laughs> there we go. This is the It won't let me do it. There we go. This is Downtown Lines Barbecue, probably one of the oldest events we have. It's their annual fundraiser. I'm not real sure how old this event is. It's been there ever since I have, and I've been there going on 38 years. Still ain't working. There we go. Anyway, that's their annual fundraiser. They use the funds for various community projects throughout the year. This is the Uplanders Banquet. It used to be Pheasants Forever, Ducks Forever. They just changed it to one banquet a year. Their main focus is educating youth on hunter safety and, and firearm safety. Heartland Toy Show. Build as the biggest toy show in Kansas. They take up Kenwood Hall and 4-H building. I mean, they had a huge crowd this year. Uh, if you go in there looking for an Xbox, you're not going to find one because it's all older toys. I think it's just going on its own unless you're doing it. I'm doing it. Oh, okay. And that brings in vendors from eight states that come to that show. You can see they had a real big crowd there this year. Uh, Prairie Long Rifle Living History Fair. This is basically a, I call it a like a mountain man back in the trapping day show because they, I mean, they have everything there. They have bear rugs, black powder rifles. They also do demonstrations throughout the day. This is another long time event that's been going on for over 25 years. And then the Ficus Christmas dinner, um, as usual, served a large crowd, probably around 4,500 people, including takeout or delivered meals. I mean, these people start calling like two weeks before this even started, wanting their meals delivered. And you just, it's, I mean, it's open to anybody. Anybody can come doesn't cost anything and we didn't you know we didn't really have any problems they had a lot of volunteers there I'd say there was probably over 50 volunteers that came and helped out that day it was kind of neat because they had tons of toys and candy that they give away to the kids before they left so it's kind of a neat de deal this is canine capers dog practice it's put on by the 4-H Council of uh, K-State Research Extension. There's basically 30 4-H families enrolled in this. They have about four classes a month in Kenwood Hall. It's just a dog training 
exercise class, and then they have their show right before the Trivers Fair. This is a first congressional reorganization meeting that the county treasurer put on. It was kind of funny because my guy that worked this told me he'd never had his hand shook so many times in one day. <laughs> Uh, now that is that's not an org that is not a, a situation when you said the Saline County Treasurer, he is involved in the the function of that organization, but that doesn't have anything to do with the Saline County Commission. No, I'm, I mean I'm not sure, Mr. Chairman, what they were voting on. I'm assuming just that first district congressional yeah. real. This is a government commodities food distribution. We have these about every other month over there, uh, you know, for your low income people, people that may be down on their luck for a little bit. All you have to do, it's, it's pretty simple. Just show up, show them proof of income. And if you qualify, they'll send you home with a, a box of food. This is our, so far our 2019 livestock show, what we have booked right now. Uh, it's going to be a busy summer right now. We have one more show than what we had last summer and we also have a two-day circus in ag hall a week before the farm show this year which we didn't have last year and then that's our calendar for february and that concludes my update all right thank you um i'll have a question for you and it may be a rita slash andrew question but on our deposits from the chemical is there an audit that's, that's uh, separate on that uh, from the, the the department audit? I mean, is that is that all included in one thing? Well, the audit will, auditor will come in and get all that money squared away, whether it's transferred into the capital outlay fund, and and yes, there's an audit. But as far as the the uh, noxious weed chemical, I mean, is that a separate? separate line fund uh, yeah, basically audit. i think that's rolled back over every year into that fund to purchase chemical i mean we make we make some profit off of it but it's just for chemical purchases and that's what i was getting at was, right. do we make a profit there yeah. or how, how does that function that uh, further comments or questions from the commissioners how is the new devices working out for the weed department and working with the road and bridge have they got pretty involved with that and yeah they've been doing you're talking about the cardiograph yep they've been doing some training with darren and it's i mean it's really nice because he can just say hey we were out cutting these trees and he sends them a picture of them and where it's at and they can go out and and spray them so they're not cutting them constantly cutting them all the time and with them doing so much of the trimming and cutting in the winter time is is there Chemicals that you, sp you still put on it in the winter time yeah. to keep them from growing. Yeah, as oh. soon as, as soon as they cut them, the quicker you can spray it on, the better. Okay. Thank you. Further questions, comments, any public comment? Seeing that, I'll bring it back to the commission. Uh, thank you very much, Rick. Uh, looks like it continues to be busy over there. So uh, that concludes our meeting for today. Uh, I, w I will say that. Uh, it was kind of a busy week for me last week. Uh, I was at the uh, airport authority meeting along with the uh, conservation district annual dinner, uh, real fire district number one, their annual uh, dinner and uh, meeting. And uh, continues to be busy this week with government day in uh, Topeka tomorrow, along with the KAC governing board on Thursday and a farm bureau annual meeting on Saturday. So uh, I want to wish uh, commissioner Weiss uh, uh, recovery, speedy recovery He's from a knee replacement surgery that he had last week. So if you're watching, Jim, I uh, hope you're getting along just fine. So go ahead, comments. One, one other thing is I want to speak is that I was on a Tri-River Fair Board last week and, and uh, there was quite a bit of discussion on re around the Expo Center and all this for their uh, coming up with their 2019 Tri-Rivers Fair this year, but also uh, cons concerns with uh, going further down the road as 2020 and down the road and I know we have a meeting with the city next week or in February early so it's like uh, like I told him we get back with him and revolve hopefully get that something knowing down the road 
our meeting number two, uh, which will follow, uh, starting in, it will be actually be in room 217 today, but we will have an executive session. We are going to have a very important uh, inmate population analysis status report with Jim Robertson, our uh, man in, out in Denver that's been doing our, our uh, legwork for us, uh, along with the county administrator's uh, weekly update. So that having been said, I will take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.